Not too often we have breaking news on the insiders here on WRTV, but that is the case today, and we're going to talk about it right off the top with Abdul Hakim Shabazz from IndyPolitics.org and our two political insiders, Republican Jim Merritt, Democrat Brian Gaddy. Gentlemen, welcome. Let's get to the breaking news. Uh, We kind of knew this was coming, but it's official as of now. Uh, Abdul is reporting first in his cheat sheet newsletter, and there will be much more to come, I'm sure, that there are two allegations of sexual misconduct so far against the Republican nominee for Secretary of State, Diego Morales. Abdul, I'll let you take it from there because you spoke to both of the accusers and published your entire interviews with them in your newsletter. Uh, Yes, I heard about this story uh, back in May, uh, that there were some issues uh, with Mr. Morales and his background, so almost sort of me too, Uh, more than Curtis Hill, but not yet, not quite uh, Harvey Weinstein. And so I spent the last several months trying to track down uh, who these women were, uh, and I've managed to speak to two of them uh, in the past week or so. Uh, And what they said uh, in the cheat sheet was very, very disturbing. Uh, They both work with Diego Morales in uh, various government roles. Uh, He uh, asked them out. They thought they were friends. They were both both these women were in their early 20s uh, at the time. Uh, He tried to kiss them, grope them, grab them, and and the whole nine yards. It's, It's a very disturbing portrait. Uh, of a gentleman who's already had issues already, like I said, whether it was getting fired from the Secretary of State's office, the $43,000 car, the, the question about his military record, uh, it is not good uh, for my Republican friends. And, and basically, I think what this boils down to is this what happens when Republican delegates are mad at the governor over things the governor technically has no control over. And so they pick Diego Morales, who's got all these questions in his background. And now this is just the latest shoe to drop. Uh, people can subscribe to the cheat sheet, and of course, uh, they'll see more, I'm sure, at IndyPolitics.org a little bit down the road. But why were you able to ascertain that uh, the women waited so long? Because these allegations are more than a decade old. Let's stipulate that. Why did they tell you they waited so long to come forward? Uh, in part because, uh, number one, uh, when you deal with the victims of, of sexual assault and, and, sec- and sexual, uh, sort of sexual nature, uh, they're very, they're very, they don't want to talk about it. Uh, they're, they're in shock, they're in trauma, they have sort of post-traumatic stress uh, disorder uh, and a lot of that. And But uh, when Diego became the nominee uh, for Secretary of State, uh, they started to sort of think about it and, and reconsider. Now, we'll make it clear, we did not use the women's names because they were uh, worried about the, the effect on their families and children. Uh, but but that, in a nutshell, that's that's what it was and that, that's what it is. And we asked them, you know, why wait so long? Did you call the police? Like, no, they just wanted to just sort of put it behind them. But when Diego became the Republican nominee for Secretary of State, uh, a couple of them felt they had to say something. Now, uh, Jim Merritt and uh, Brian Gaddy are hearing, hearing these allegations for the first time as we talk about them. And, of course, we all we know is what is in uh, Abdul's cheat sheet right now and what will be at IndyPolitics.org. But, um, yes, damning allegations. Uh, Jim, they are more than a decade old. But regardless of what one thinks about this, a lot of what is being said about Mr. Morales seems to be coming from other Republicans. Now, and and I know know Republican Party leadership is blaming it on, as Kyle Hupfer, uh, the chairman, said, Democrats and their allies in the media a while back. But whether it's what Abdul uh, has published today, whether it was some of the allegations that James Briggs from the Indianapolis Star brought up in the past, they seem to be coming from members of your party, other Republicans who one reason or another, are not happy that Mr. Morales is the nominee. Right. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for having me this morning. Uh, these are serious allegations. And uh, I and thank you f- to Abdul for bringing them to the surface because uh, n- nothing should be swept, un- swept under the rug in any situation. And uh, I think it's up to the uh, Morales campaign to to respond to this. Obviously, this is this is breaking news and it's hard to react to. Uh, but uh, the the Diego Morales uh, nomination of the state at the state convention uh, was uh, was was quite an a, a, quite a situation where many people have come into the party that Diego has brought into the party almost in the last two years. And um, and and there might be. It sounds like there are people outside the tent, if you will, um, throwing rocks inside at Diego. And we we know this from all the allegations, all of the situations that we talk on uh, talk on uh, political insiders in the last month or so. 
and uh, it, it, it gives you cause for concern, what is next? And so uh, I take this very seriously as a Republican. I take this very seriously as a Hoosier and a citizen. And um, I'm looking forward to the Morales campaign and Diego um, in particular, uh, specifically to react to it. And uh, it doesn't help the campaign whatsoever. Brian, I'll get your reaction in a second, but let me ask Abdul, yeah. did you reach out to the Morales campaign and get a reaction from them? Uh, not yet. Uh, like I said, uh, what I wrote in the Chichi was this story it will be updated and is developing. So I'm going to give them time to, to formulate a response and uh, uh, they'll probably be uh, posted on, soon on anypolitics.org. Okay. Good. Brian, uh, this is the, the latest in, in a series of things that uh, Mr. Morales has been involved in. And I know the Democratic nominee, Destiny Wells, has, has been out there talking about you know her record, certainly. And yes, talking about Mr. Morales, um, but she has not been talking about uh, the military issue that we brought up uh, previously on Insiders, uh, whether or not uh, Mr. Morales completed his military service uh, that he claims to have completed, whether or not he is, quote unquote, a veteran as most of us know a veteran, but what do Democrats do with information like this? Or, or do you do anything yet? Do you uh, wait and see how this plays out and just keep campaigning and, and pushing your person and why they you think they are qualified for this position? I just think we just keep uh, pushing our candidate, Destiny Wells, and we just, just wait and see how it plays out. I, 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 it's really, obviously it's very troubling um, with the Me Too movement um that's played such a major role in our in our american society uh in recent years and to hear that you have a candidate that's running for secretary of state that has these serious allegations is just troubling um uh, to um, um follow up my friend good friend jim said uh it's troubling as a democrat as as a hoosier as an american so he was saying as a republican i find it troubling as a, as a hoosier as a democrat as an american um, it's just really uh, unfortunate that you have uh, too many men that get in positions of power and abuse that power um, to um, mistreat women and not treat women with the respect and dignity that they deserve. So we just have to see how it plays out, but it's extremely troubling. And if it's proven, which I have no doubt um, that Abdul, a um, very good friend of mine, uh, an intrepid reporter, he's one of the best political reporters in the state. And if he's come up with this, it's I would say it's pretty much a slam dunk that it's true. If it's true, it's disqualifying and he should withdraw from the race. Well, it might be a little late for that. We're just a little over a month uh, out from Election Day. And again, much more to come on this developing story about Diego Morales and the allegations made against him. Let's move to a race here in Marion County that is certainly getting the most attention, I would think, of any local race. And that is the race for Marion County Prosecutor. Here in a, the next couple of weeks, about a week and a half, in fact, on October 11th, we here at WRTV are hosting a televised debate between the Democratic Prosecutor, Ryan Mears, and his Republican opponent, Cindy Carrasco. They've had one <clears throat> campaign forum together already, Brian. Uh, this will be the te uh, televised debate so far, thus far the only televised debate in this race. And Brian, uh, Cindy Carrasco, the Republican campaign, they have been going after Mr. Mears based simply on the crime numbers and the violent crime. And, and it seems like every time we have a big story involving crime, whether it's a shooting, whether it's whatever, uh, it, it seems to come back to Mr. Mears. The allegation has been that too many, uh, in Republicans' words, violent criminals have been released too early. Uh, on other charges, and they're going back and committing more crimes. Uh, there's also the issue of Indiana's red flag law and whether Mr. Mears has been uh, strict enough in enforcing that and perhaps preventing some of the shootings that we've seen here in Indianapolis and Marion County. How do you think Ryan Mears is handling this so far? What are his prospects for election since uh, he was elected initially in a party caucus? Uh, Prosecutor Mears is going to be reelected, no doubt about it. Um, Marion County is a blue county. Um, Indianapolis is a democratic city, a dominant city, a democratic city for us, and it's no doubt about it politically. And th this is just something Republicans do. They're, 
And anytime there's crime, oh, they try to paint us Democrats as soft on crime. I mean, they've been doing that since Richard Nixon, <laughs> probably even before Nixon. I mean, that's just part of their playbook. I mean, come on. I mean, anybody that understands anything about American politics knows that's what the Republicans do. They love to paint us Democrats as soft on crime. Well, the fact is, crime is up, not just here in Marion County, Indianapolis, but all over the country. And it's not just a problem that's just here in Indianapolis. So this 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 dog won't hunt, as they say down south. Um, uh, Prosecutor Ryan Mears will be reelected, and he's doing a great job. Well, homicides are actually down this year, although they stipulate they are still uh, historically high. And they are down, absolutely. They they are they are down. So, but but again, uh, it's I guess it's debatable as to how much effect on homicides and certain crimes that the prosecutor has. Uh, versus a, a whole lot of other factors. That's probably the, the point that uh, Ryan Mears has tried to make. But Jim, uh, the ads that Cindy Carrasco has been running, the message that she, she has been sending uh, is very firmly focused on crime. And it's, it's particularly interesting that uh, she's making an issue of the red flag law because there was a lot of attention about the red flag law when the FedEx mass shooting happened not all that long ago. Cindy Carrasco has done an outstanding job of focusing in on crime and, and uh, the mirrors uh, of being prosecutor and his office failing to fight it. And uh, she's, she has a great focus. She's been very effective this last summer and this fall. Uh, she was outstanding in that forum that you mentioned, and she'll do a great job when this debate is going to be on six uh, coming up soon. I, I think that Cindy just needs to continue to focus on uh, Mr. Mears as well as uh, the turnstile that is at the at, in the prosecutor's office where people are uh, accused of a, a violent crime and uh, and and the, the the system is just not working uh, for for um, the folks that are victims as well as uh, the community at large. Uh, we do have a, a crime problem in Indianapolis, in all major cities around the country, and in Indianapolis and Marion County, uh, Cindy's doing an outstanding job to offer a focus, provide a focus, and, you know, we're going to be voting very, very soon, so she needs to continue the pressure, continue to be on, on every street corner talking with people about violent crime, it, it, as well as petty theft. Uh, there, there are so many things that a prosecutor can do. You mentioned the, the red flag law, of which I had a little bit to do at the state house. Uh, that, that is something people are very, very concerned about. And um, Democrat, Republican, Independent, people are, are, are scared at, at times to take a jog in the morning. And this is something that people um, have to go to the polls and, and voice their opinion and, and vote. But with respect, I know you had something to do with that red flag law, Jim, uh, but at the same time, more and more Republicans are against red flag laws nationwide, even though, I mean, Indiana was kind of an early adopter of a red flag law, but that seems to be increasingly, as far as Republicans are concerned, uh, they they don't like the red flag laws. I guess they're making the argument that they are enforced against Republicans uh, too much or potentially, I'm not sure what the argument is, but they they kind of tie it with the entire gun control issue. So uh, it seems like you know, Cindy is, is trying to say, well, he didn't enforce the red flag law, but red flag laws are increasingly uh, a harder sell among people in your party. Right. This Republican is in solid support of red flag laws. They have to be effective. You're out of step with your form. party, Jim. What? <laughs> You're well, out of step with your party. I, I, well, uh, that sometimes that happens. I, I, I do that a lot. And I, I'm, I'm an independent voice and that they just have to be an they have to be enforced effectively, and if something needs to change with the law, so it's uh, it, it, it's uh, clear, uh, the legislature should do it. I think we've uh, amended it at least twice uh, to make it more effective, and and so I believe that that uh, uh, red flag laws, if they're uh, developed and they're uh, and and they're installed correctly, uh, they can keep us safe. Well, I agree. That's that's something Jim and I agree on. So we so we're we're making breaking news. Jim Merritt and Brian Gaddy agree on something. 
<laughs> Abdul, uh, I know that you've got some polling coming out here soon on a lot of races. I know we mentioned Secretary of State's race already. Uh, you have some polling coming out soon in the prosecutor's race as well. Uh, yes. Uh, the last uh, the last time we polled uh, earlier this summer, uh, Mears was about 46, 47 percent. Uh, we don't we don't really expect those numbers to change uh, all that much. Uh, now, with respect to uh, crime being up everywhere, uh, that's true. But it's like uh, when I was in grammar school, I told my father, like, so why did you fail the test? Well, Dad, everybody failed the test. Like, I don't care about everybody. I care about you. And so that was sort of, you know, the, the argument that crime's up everywhere. Uh, yes, but but no. Also, number two, please keep this in mind with our homicide murder rates. Last year, we had three mass shootings. You take out the mass shootings, and then, of course, our murder rate is going to go down. Uh, but obviously, but if you, but if you like I said, we take out those mass shootings, the, the, the numbers are basically about, about the same as where, where they were. Uh, if you're Cindy Carrasco right now, what you need to do is uh, you got the Republican base, you got the Republican support, go to those crime ridden neighborhoods, particularly African American neighborhoods on the on the east side and their west side, and talk to those people because they're the ones who are impacted by shootings, by crime, and by violence every day. Talk about crime, talk about violence, also talk about pre prevention um, as well. That's what I would do if I were Cindy Carrasco. Well, see, even at that, Abdul, just going there, what does that mean by her showing up? What is she going to be able to do? Hey, the positive showing system. up is half the battle. I Ask agree. Hasn't but, but just, at a debate lately. Well, just I mean, being You got to show up. You got to talk to people. You now, just her showing up is not going to just be enough because Prosecutor Mears is doing a great job with battling crime. And crime, in many respects, is down from what it was uh, last year. So again, like I said earlier, it's just this is just part of the playbook of the Republicans. They they, they like to paint us Democrats as soft on crime, which is one of the biggest canards, which is a nice word for lie <laughs> in American politics. We Democrats fight crime just as hard as the Republicans. So in the end, Prosecutor Mears will be reelected and he will win this race, no doubt about it. Now, I didn't say Prosecutor Mears wasn't going to be reelected because I think uh, I think the odds are in his favor. But, but, Cindy, but Cindy Carrasco does have a path to victory. It's a narrow path, but it's still a path. Oh, it's narrow. Very well, narrow. Yeah. <laughs> a man named Greg By the Ballard. way, people said the same thing about Bart Peterson, about uh, Greg Ballard and Bart Peterson back in 2007. So. <laughs> I was about to say that. Lightning uh, doesn't always strike in the same place. Um, there's only got to hit often. you one time. Well. <laughs> October well. 11th is when we will have our uh, debate between Prosecutor Ryan Mears and Cindy Carrasco here on WRTV. Uh, Jim Merritt said a minute ago that he broke breaks with his party sometimes, and here is another area where possibly he would break with his party. Uh, our friend Mr. Merritt published a column in the Indiana Capital Chronicle this week, the headline, Restoring the GOP's Legacy of the Environment. Uh, Jim, you're essentially calling on Republicans to get back to what Republicans have historically done, and that's protecting the environment. Usually, when you hear uh, protecting the environment or when a lot of Republicans here protect the environment or do something to battle climate change, you name it, uh, the reflexive Republican action is, no, we can't do that because fill in the blank. It'll cost too much money. Uh, it's uh, socialism. I mean, you 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 name the argument. Uh, the you petroleum make the, companies own their party. You no, you, well, you, you <laughs> but Mr. Merritt, he, he makes the opposite argument uh, in this column that you can read. At the Capitol Chronicle, why'd you write that, Jim? Well, I I, I feel very strongly. I, I chaired the Utility Committee in in the Senate for a long time, and uh, back in 2005, I thought renewables would uh, never come along as a as a viable power source. And through the last 17 years, uh, they they the technologies in, in, in improved incredibly and changed uh, nuclear power. Has become safe. It's become green, and and it's all about terminology. It's all about messaging, and I want the Republican Party to change. I, I want us to remember Teddy Roosevelt about uh, conservation and being conservative. And and uh, Richard Nixon was right there with the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act. And uh, Bill Ruckelhaus, a born Hoosier, was the first director of the EPA, and and so. We have a rich history in the Republican Party of, of talking about and saving the environment, and we need to get back to that. And you see Mitch Daniels at Purdue uh, really leading the charge on nuclear power and small modular reactors and how this can grow our economy. I just I wanted to make a statement that that um, uh, we can do better in the Republican Party about talking about messaging about the environment. 
it, it, and, and I, I believe my friend Abdul will say this doesn't pull well, but it doesn't pull well because we don't talk about it well. The Mitch Daniels administration did an incredible amount of great things at IDEM and uh, Goose Lake Pond and so many different places about the environment. And I'm going to be talking about that in, in future columns. I believe this is a winning issue that um, people that are 25 to 40 are very worried about our future. And uh, the Republican Party should take this as an opportunity to uh, talk about the new ways to uh, uh, power our society and, and, uh, and, and, and even further clean our air and clean our water. And clean energy, it's Clean Energy Month in October. And I think we should do a lot more with honoring uh, our surroundings and our environment. Well, Brian, there's something else that uh, you and Jim may agree on, but at the same time, uh, it, it, while it does concern young people and polling shows that it concerns young people, um, and anybody can take this question, it doesn't seem to be a driver of people to the polls come election time. It, it doesn't seem like it's something that is top of mind with candidates. Uh, come election time. I mean, yet we'll hear about it during the presidential race, but at the local level, at the state level, it's just something that's not talked about. Well, it's like the hemp issue or, or cannabis. It, it, you have to drive it. You have to talk about it. Uh, the Republicans have to make it an issue. And, uh, and I'm trying to focus on issues that I think the Republican Party um, has to talk about uh, and to, to widen the tent, to widen the, um, the approach to, to voters. And, 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 and inform them. And I think once our voters and other voters, independents and, and um, friendly Democrats, once you inform them that this is important to us, I think it will pull better. I, I, I truly do. Well, Brian, I'll, I'll let you get a word in because it seems like at least lately we've had a, a Republican governor, Eric Holcomb, who is making strides toward that. We hear about the, the building of uh, electric vehicle battery uh, factories, those are coming to Indiana. And finally, after so much resistance from the car industry, from the auto industry in this state, it seems like there's some pr actual progress being made toward building up electric vehicle infrastructure in Indiana, where it's actually possible for people to not only own a, a, an electric car or a hybrid, but to actually put that to use across uh, Indiana. Absolutely. And just hearing my good friend Jim talk this morning, it's just further evidence that Indiana is not a hardcore conservative ruby red state. This is, this is a red state, but I say it's like a very light red shade of a red state, which goes to show you that even the Republicans in Indiana know that they cannot be seen as hardcore anti-environment conservatives or they risk losing statewide elections. So I really appreciate Jim's comments this morning about the environment. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, he has to go back to Teddy Roosevelt and Richard Nixon, because those are the last two presidents that have really done anything about the environment from the Republican side of the fence. Um, too often GOP stands for good on petroleum, not grand old party. And you've got an uphill fight over there in, on your side of the fence, my friend, uh, convincing your Republican friends that the environment is an issue that is important to all Hoosiers because too many in your party deny the existence of climate change. You've got people in your party who thinks, who think um, your former twice impeached disgraced president, Donald Trump said it was a Chinese hoax. <laughs> I mean, so you've got a lot of work to do over there, Jim. I wish you good luck, my friend. Good luck, you'll need it. Abdul, we just got a few seconds left. Uh, are there uh, enough Republicans like Mr. Merritt and uh, the way Governor Holcomb has been lately on the environment, or is it still the other way around right now? Um, I think uh, <clears throat> to use an environmental analogy, I think uh, for the most part, uh, environmental change will happen at sort of a glacier's pace. It'll be slow, but it'll be uh, but it'll be massive. And what you're finding is is that Republicans are 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 on the position on the environment, responding to market forces. You know, people don't want to use fossil fuels. That's why the electric cars have popped up. Uh, that's why you see electric car battery battery plants here in Indiana. But also, you got to remember too, uh, we don't have necessarily the the infrastructure grid yet to 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 to, to power electric vehicles just yet. But, but I do think it's a step in the right direction. And Jim is absolutely right. Teddy Roosevelt did big conservation, and Richard Nixon actually started the EPA. Yeah, but look, but look, but look, Abdul, you're going back to TR and and Nixon. I mean, what have the Republicans done since Nixon on the environment? 
So, well, as I said, the Mitch Daniels administration did a lot regarding regarding getting our air cleaner in, in Indiana, and it, you have to start from somewhere. Uh, Ronald Reagan had a very good record on environment, and so uh, you you just have to continue to work on these issues. and And the and the article really was uh, trying to recruit Republicans to think outside the box. The Environmental Party, ladies and gentlemen, is the Democratic Party. But I do appreciate your your efforts, Jim. But uh, unfortunately, I think the you got a tough hill to climb, my friend. Uh, when you think about the environment, the party you should be thinking about is the Indiana Democratic Party and the Democratic Party nationally, because we are the environmentalists. The evidence shows it. Well, it said, <laughs> it, as, as Ray said, we had uh, we, we were. We've got a plan to put EV uh, fueling stations around the state. You have to start somewhere, and uh, and and uh, I think the trend. I think the I think we're going to be overwhelming as as uh, uh, as Abdul said in this area. And it, you just have to start somewhere. And uh, I truly believe the Republican Party needs to lurch this way uh, because we're a minority party, and uh, it, it may be a red state. But we need to continue to attract independents and, and friendly Democrats to the poll. Good luck to you. Need uh -huh. <laughs> Gentlemen, we have, we've reached the end of the road for this Insider segment. Uh, Brian Gaddy, Jim Merritt, Abdul Hakeem Shabazz. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. We'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you, Ray.